noticed that there was a twig on the ground in front of him. And he looked at it carefully, and he noticed that there was a cocoon on the branch. Do you know what a cocoon is? It's what a caterpillar can. He goes and he attaches himself with a silky cocoon to a branch until he metamorphoses. And what does he metamorphose into? A butterfly. Right. Well, anyway, as a small boy, he was fascinated about butterflies. Not that he went out and catch them or, or caught them or mounted them, but he just enjoyed watching them and the sheer design and their habits. So, as his mother had shown him when he was a little boy, he took his handkerchief out of his pocket and reached down and gently took the twig off the branch and carried it home. Well, when he got home, he put the twig in a wide mouth mason jar with a lid on top of it with holes punched in it. Have you ever done that? Anyway, they put it on top of the mantle in the living room because they felt that it would be safe there for their cat. Well, his wife looked at it. It kept her attention for about a moment, but the man studied it. And he would go over and he'd look at it. And one day, he noticed that there was slight tremble. And he didn't see anything more. And then later, he went over there and he looked, and it seemed to be really shaking and trembling, and, and something was going on inside. Well, he watched him at that evening, and the poor little cocoon was still shaking and shuddering and trembling, and, and he thought, well, that butterfly is going to die if he doesn't get out of there. So, he went in over and got the, the jar down, and he opened it up, and he took it out, and with a pen knife that he had in his desk drawer, he slit a little slice inside of the cocoon and put it back in the jar. Wouldn't you know it? Suddenly he sees a wing stretch out, and then another. Finally, the butterfly fly was free. The butterfly got off the twig and he walked around the, the rim of the jar and he even walked over and he was walking down the mantel. But he didn't fly. He just didn't. Well, at first the man thought, well, maybe his wings were still wet. You know? But he waited and nothing happened. So he had a friend that lived next door that was a science teacher. So he went to him and he said, listen, found this cocoon, I brought it home, I put it in a drawer, I watched it, and it was struggling so hard that I, I went and I, I made a little slit in the cocoon so that the butterfly could get out. And the science teacher says, stop, that's what you've done wrong. You see, it's the struggle that gives the butterfly the strength to fly. It's like with that with us too. It's the struggles in life that strengthen our faith the most. Yes. Amen. Another word for struggle can be adversity, affliction, sorrow. But in the Bible, it's referred to as trials. Now, some people, when they're faced with trials, they throw their hands up and they just give up. Or they become angry and they become bitter. And some of them even turn to something to relieve their pain. It's how you handle your problems that make you either stronger or weaker. When we deal with trials, we have to remember that God is in control. 
Remember the story of Joseph that was sold by his brother into slavery and was carried off to Egypt and went through a lot of trials and difficulties and finally became a very important man. But you know what he said to his brothers when he met them and he realized who he was? He said, as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive and as they are today. Trials are God's special gift to us. Psalms 55, 22 says, Cast your burden on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. God promises us delivers, deliverance and eternal blessings. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He's now seated at the right hand of God. Trials have a purpose. God wants to purify our faith. Job said, He has tested me through the refining fire, and I have come out pure gold. God wants to cultivate our character. God's number one purpose in your life is to make you like Jesus. He is much more interested in building your character and making us comfortable. I think James summed it up real well. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to pray today? Okay. My precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these precious children. And we thank you for watching over us all and being by our side and carrying us through our trials and tribulations. Trials that make us more loving to each other. And we want to be like you, and we pray that we can be the kind of person that you want us to be. In the precious Son, we pray. Amen.